The number one lesson I could offer you where your work is concerned is this. I visualized this for myself. When I was selling copiers door to door, I had a very clear vision of what my life was gonna be like. I think that women can be respected and liked at the same time. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something greater inside you too, that you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's learn 10 lessons from America's richest self-made women. Okay, let's kick it off with lesson number one, master your craft with Oprah Winfrey. The number one lesson I could offer you where your work is concerned is this. Become so skilled, so vigilant, so flat out fantastic at what you do that your talent cannot be dismissed. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You're only on this planet to be you not someone else's imitation of you. I had to learn that the hard way on the air live, anchoring the news. One night in my 20s, when I first started broadcasting, I was 19, moved to an anchor by the time I was 20, and I was just pretending to be Barbara Walker, Walters. I was just trying to talk like Barbara, act like Barbara, Barbara hold my legs like Barbara. Um, and I was on the air and I hadn't read the copy fully and I called Canada, Canada. And <laughs> I did that on the air. I cracked myself up because I thought Barbara would never call Canada, Canada. <laughs> and that little breakthrough, that little crack, that little moment that I stopped pretending allowed the real me to come through. Your life journey is about learning to become more of who you are and fulfilling the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's why you're here. Lesson number two, visualize with Sarah Blakely. I visualized this for myself. When I was selling copiers door to door, I had a very clear vision of what my life was gonna be like. And I encourage everyone to do it. Uh, take a snap photo of what success looks like for you. Are you, how many employees do you have? Are, how much are you making? Where do you live? What, are you sitting at a table with world leaders? Are you standing on a stage in New York City giving a speech? And hold on to that, that snapshot and you will subconsciously start to make decisions that get you there. And so my snap photo for myself when I was going door to door to sell copiers was to be self-employed, invent a product that I could sell to lots of people and not just one copier to each person, and create a business for myself that would continue to f fund itself if I wasn't present. I wanted money to be generated without me having to be there. I was that specific in my vision. Lesson number three, do what you love with Kylie Jenner. I think I struggled for a minute with finding something to do on my own, and what was I gonna do? I knew I was passionate about makeup, but I didn't know I could have fun every day doing my job. I had an insecurity with my lips when I was younger, so I turned to makeup to help me feel more confident. I went to the makeup store, and I just like, I didn't even know really what colors I was picking. I was just like, I want some lip liner that looks like the color of my lips, because I just want my lips to look fuller. But I could never find a lip liner and a lipstick that matched or even the right color that was perfect for me. So that's where the lip kit started. I was so focused on like formula and color, but everything else just kind of fell into place. I put so much love into everything that I make and I make sure everything is perfect and something I would personally use. So then when I see my fans have it and they love it and their reaction, that's what's the most exciting to me. If I could give some advice, it's do something that you love. If you're building something from the ground up, like do something that you're passionate about. So you just have fun every day and you love what you do. Lesson number four, listen to your fans with Rihanna. How social media affects the way that you make music. Do you consider feedback from fans? Absolutely, big time. Like my fans definitely have an impact on the way I make music, what I do. Like it still comes from me and I still like to show them new things, but I, I always want to make sure that, you know, 
I have to pay attention. Yeah. They say things that you need to hear. Like, yeah. They're out there in the world. They're not in the little box here. They know what's going on, and, and you will be stupid to be so oblivious to what they're saying. You have to pay attention. Also, if you want to have more confidence and learn from other successful women, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. To figure out where your power base is. When I was selling copiers door to door, I had a very clear vision of what my life was going to be like. It's never easy to find a great team, although a team makes all the difference. Lesson number five, find your rhythm. I always had a philosophy around balance. Uh, a lot of people talk about balance. I don't really believe in balance, but I do believe in finding your rhythm. And I think a lot of it has to do not with three square meals a day, time at home at night, eight hours of sleep. I think it has to do with resentment. Because I think what fuels burnout is this notion of, well, wait, I sacrificed this thing. And it honestly meant too much to me, and it, meant, and it made me resentful. And for me, it's really about being able to walk out of the office for one week every four to six months. Find if I, if I start pushing that out or delaying vacations, I'll be like, you know, I'm just not going to work that hard tonight. Like, I didn't get to take that trip I really wanted to take. And so I think you can work arbitrarily hard for really long periods of time, but you need to know yourself well enough that you can avoid resentment and avoid burnout. Lesson number six, make yourself indispensable. I think that women can be respected and liked at the same time. There's a new book that came out, and I'm not hawking the book, even though she's a dear friend of mine. The book is called Leading Lady, and it's a biography of Sherry Lansing, who was the first female president of a major motion picture movie studio. She's probably the most beloved woman in Hollywood who would think nothing of cutting you off at the knees in a negotiation, but she did it in a way with a, she did it in a way that you almost felt as if, felt good when you left the office. If you pick up the book, pick up the book, it really exemplifies what I'm saying to you. You demand your worth. You have to excel. You never make a threat that you're not prepared to back up. When I, if I said to my company, if I don't get what's on this little card that I want for the next three years, I'm leaving. I can do this myself without you. And they believed me. I'm not gonna tell you whether I would have done it or not. <laughs> but they believed me because I could have. And I had that kind of confidence. So you can only have that kind of confidence if you make yourself indispensable at your job, whatever your job is, whether you're someone's secretary or assistant or dentist or hairdresser or my makeup artist is invaluable to me, not because somebody else couldn't do my makeup, but she has a great spirit. So when I come into work, she's, she gets me going. So she's made herself irreplaceable. So whatever she asks, we give her. And that gives you confidence. So you can be liked and respected. But if I had to, to choose between being liked and being respected, I would choose being respected. Lesson number seven, be fearless with Vera Wang. One of the things uh, that I found extremely fascinating about you is that you and your career have consistently been a risk taker. In fact, I think one of the biggest risks you took was turning the traditional white bridal gown into pink, yellow, green, even black. Um, what drove you to take such risks? Well, I will say I am fairly fearless, although it doesn't come without a price. But creatively, um, when you work in a certain genre, and I work in ready to wear as well as bridal, but I think we're very celebrated, obviously, for the dress for the woman's most important day of her life. So I have to say that trying to keep that fresh, trying to keep that new, trying to keep myself creative, and trying to envision bridal as a whole nother um, form, trying to envision bridal as a whole other form of self-expression for not only myself as a designer, but for the bride, um, I've taken big risks, like black dresses, nude dresses, pink dresses. Lesson number eight, follow your instincts with Tori Birch. How do you know, specifically for your company, when it's right to enter a market, like how do you personally make that decision? 
Well, I think it's right when you're right. And I think that it's, it's um, when, I, when I talk to entrepreneurs, I always uh, say, when you enter the market, make sure you have a unique concept and idea. And I always look at the market, and if you're missing something, that's a pretty good judge of it. And I think it's about instinct. And um, I find that whenever I don't follow my instinct, that's when things can go wrong. But I think it's, um, Listen, when 2011 happened, I knew that wasn't the right time. So I think you have to really have a very focused business plan, and you have to really believe in it and be passionate about it. But I think there's never really a wrong time. It's all about you and what you're ready for. Lesson number nine, put your boxing gloves on with Madonna. So, well, I, I think the best advice I can give anyone, male or female, is that, you know, you have to really believe in what you're doing. I think having a good job and having work is, um, it, it's, hard, it's hard to come by and being able to do what you wanna do with your life. So you have to be willing, first of all, you have to be really passionate about what you do and really believe in what you do because there's gonna be a lot of fights and battles and struggles along the way. So my best advice is to really believe and love what you do because, um, yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, nothing, you know, you, you, you always have to fight for things that are worth it. So put your boxing gloves on. And lesson number 10, the last one before, a very special bonus clip is Do Everything with Susan Wojcicki. You were Google's 16th employee. Mm -hmm. First marketing manager, you worked on Google Doodles, Google Images, Google Books. You built the ad business. How many hats have you worn in 18 years? You know, I think when you join a startup, you just sort of have to be willing to do whatever the startup needs you to do. But part of it also was that I, because maybe I didn't have as fixed a role at first, I was always looking for the opportunity. And so I was like, oh look, there's an opportunity. Like nobody else is working. For example, when I worked on image search, I was like, no one else is working on image search. Like there are all these other people, they're working on the tech search, but you know, images would be really cool. And, um, you know, today that's a really popular search. So I think doing lots of things and having the freedom to move around the company actually enabled me to see a lot of opportunities and then, um, and then grow them. Now I have a special bonus clip with Sheryl Sandberg on how to think big that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, I would love to know, this is a test series, it's something new that I'm trying out. What are your thoughts? Do you like this format? Do you like this topic? Any opinions, any feedback, anything to prove, let us know in the comments below. We take it seriously. Thank you. I think the most important thing about growing a business successfully is thinking ahead about where you're gonna be. So I think about like the three tips you have for scaling an organization. The first, and I think the most important, is to think big. People think about how do you manage, how do you motivate an organization? And they think about management, you know, basically the science of administering a business or leadership. And my favorite definition of leadership is the art of accomplishing more than the science of management says is possible. When you have a big vision, when you're thinking really big, something that can change the world. So my favorite example, connecting the world, which was Mark Zuckerberg's vision for Facebook. That's the kind of thing that excites people and motivates them. That gets them to follow you, not just because they work for you and they need to do what you say, but because they believe in what you're trying to do. And when you're trying to really scale an organization, you need to go really quickly and get people to accomplish more than they thought was possible. And I think that comes from internal motivation, which really comes from a vision that's big enough. If you want to learn to have more confidence, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Find your one word. And it's not just timely because I actually have a book about it, but really because I feel it's one of the most important things that you can do. It's understanding what you stand for as a human being.